This was the question that I asked you at the end of the previous part of the lecture, and the point here is that all three of these sorts of plants are using heat engines. And we've seen in fossil fuel based plants using heat engines that they can achieve around about 40 percent. And so the answer here is 30 to 40. And you might wonder why it isn't just about 40, like with fossil fuel plants. And the answer is just that with some of these, particularly the geothermal plants, you have to make do with a slightly lower temperature. And so the efficiency ends up being a little lower. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to focus mainly on solar and wind power. Hydropower is about the simplest of the renewable energy sources, and I'm hoping you more or less understand it. You're converting gravitational potential energy into electric potential energy. And geothermal is only available in certain places, and so it's perhaps less relevant to many areas. Biofuel is just so complicated, I can't do justice to it in this lecture. For power generation facilities, some important terminology and a sometimes important distinction is availability factor versus capacity factor. Availability factor is the time that the facility is available divided by the total time, whereas capacity factor is the actual power produced over some time period divided by the nameplate capacity. So both of these tend to be less than one because of different causes. Availability factor can be less than one because of the fuel unavailability, where things like wind and sunlight count as fuel, and or for maintenance. Capacity factor can be less than one for all of those reasons, but also because of decisions, usually economic decisions, to run at reduced output. So the availability factor is always greater than the, than the capacity factor. Well, almost always. There's no way an availability factor can be greater than one. But if a facility can run at over 100% output, then it is possible for the capacity factor to be greater than one. Normally, this is only true for nuclear plants. So now let's look at the things that affect how much power a solar facility can produce. So at the top of the Earth's atmosphere, the flux density of light is about 1360 watts per square meter. But that's not really relevant. What matters is that at the surface, in clear dry air with the sun directly overhead, the flux is about 1000 watts per meter squared. This is reduced if the sun is not coming from straight overhead. First of all, if the panels or other collectors are not able to be steered to point directly into the sun, then there is what is called a cosine factor, which gets introduced. But more importantly, because it affects even steerable collectors, if the sun is not directly overhead, then the sunlight has to pass through a longer path in the atmosphere, and this reduces the flux density overall. So this all has an influence on capacity factor, which is influenced by the number of hours of daylight, the angle of the sunlight because of the cosine factor and the length of the path that the light follows through the atmosphere, weather, and air moisture levels. However, an advantage that solar power facilities have is that you know exactly when they're going to produce no power, night, and so all the maintenance can be planned to happen at night. Some example values from the U.S. Uh, Energy Information Administration show that in the U.S. photovoltaics and CSP facilities both have typical capacity factors in around the 20s of percent. So now that we've looked at capacity factor, let's look at efficiency. Here is a figure from the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and it summarizes efficiencies of research uh, photovoltaic cells. And it shows that currently the best reported ones are around 47%. But note that these are cells in research labs. More typically, currently, for commercially available types, efficiencies are in the 10 to 20% range. Let's check your understanding. So suppose we have a small photovoltaic facility. It has 10,000 square meters of solar panels with an efficiency of 20%, and it runs at a capacity factor of 25%. Averaged over a reasonably long time, what's the average power output of this facility? 